Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at Bryn Mawr Presbyterian Church in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. With me is the uh, Director of Music and Fine Arts, Jeffrey Brillhart. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you for coming in today to show us this wonderful instrument. Uh, I'm really excited. I know a lot of people know about this organ and are excited to learn yeah. about it. So tell me what we have here. Well, what we have is a 2005 uh, Rieger organ um, that has a rather interesting history in that the church in 1972 um, commissioned a Rieger organ. And um, I began here in 1983 and quickly discovered that there were certain issues with the old organ. And over the, over the course of um, almost 20 years, um, we worked at trying to solve some of the issues. And finally, in 2001, uh, we formed a committee to look seriously at what we might do to make the old organ um, function more reliably. I think that's the right way to put it. And um, it was kind of, it was unprecedented because first the old organ was the largest organ that Rieger had ever built. So it was a, a monumental instrument. It was four manuals, 90, 98 ranks, 68 stops, pipe significant organ. Uh, pipe organ. And, um, and it was a relatively young organ to even be discussing the possibility of being replaced. So after a year of study, um, we decided we would go ahead and bite the bullet and replace the organ. And um, we ended up, surprisingly, to many people, getting another Rieger. Um, but we discovered over the course of our study that the Rieger Orgelbau um, had, had evolved immensely and was building really remarkable instruments all over the world. And for those that don't recognize the name immediately, that's an Austrian firm. From Austria, from, yeah. from a little uh, town. It's a beautiful area. of It's Western Austria on Lake Constance. And so when, you're, when you walk out of the, the factory, there are the Alps in front of you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty inspiring environment. And um, it's a wonderful company. The people that, that uh, work there are fantastic. The owner, uh, Bendelin Eberly, is a magnificent human being and an incredible engineer. At the time that we were exploring um, getting a new organ, um, one of their voicers um, was a man named Michel Gagné, who was French, and um, in, in many ways almost Olivier Latry's surrogate father. They were very, very close. And um, so in the process of, of this whole project, I, I reached out to Olivier, whom I'd known for very many years, and Olivier immediately said, yes, get a new Rieger. They're fantastic. And, and when you do, make sure Michel Gagné is the man that voices it. Okay. So, so that's, how things, <laughs> that's how things unfolded. And um, so for a couple of years, um, there were many visits to Europe and Olivier flying over here. And um, out of all of our, our work came the idea for an organ that would be Similar to what Cavaillacol, Aristide Cavaillacol, the greatest French organ builder, as you all know, um, might have built in the early 1860s to, to early 1870s. And, and specifically what that meant was that, um, imagine that Cavaillacol was, was hired to build a new organ and he walks in the cathedral and there is uh, a French Baroque organ by Clicquot. For example, Saint-Sulpice or Notre Dame Paris, both of whom um, both cathedrals had, um, both churches had remarkable Baroque organs that weren't in great shape. Um, so Cavaille Cole would incorporate virtually the entire French Baroque organ into the new organ and then build um, uh, orchestral, uh, more orchestral sounding stops around that. So at Saint-Sulpice Paris, you had the entire embedded French classic organ in that organ. Notre Dame Cathedral, you can play um, completely convincingly on just the 18th century stops. So that was, that was our goal. We thought that would make sense because there are not in America many organs that can play French classic music, let alone um, French romantic music. So our Austrian organ has a French accent, both in romantic and Oh, it has a very strong and French music. accent, absolutely, <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, uh, and I can see the stop names certainly reflect that as well. They do, they do. Um, Even the, the uh, I bought signs in Paris um, um, <laughs> for uh, the doors so that people can see that they've entered a French space. So <laughs> Sean Calvin would be rolling over in his grave on that one. <laughs> So part of the, so uh, the, the study for the organ involved um, visiting um, historic instruments, um, particularly the Clicquot in Poitiers, France. Very, very beautiful organ, maybe the most beautiful organ in the world. Saint-Sulpice Paris, because it was such a successful integration of, of old and new. And so in this organ, you find, uh, in a sense, in a, in a very real way, an embedded French classic organ. 
surrounded by, by um, French Romantic stops with a 20th or 21st century accent as well. Okay. So. Well, I'm anxious to hear some of it. Yes, um, yes. Take us through it wherever you want to start. However you think this is the well, best way let's, to introduce this. Well, let's start with stops that are, that are most um, like the Clicquot stop. So, for example, the Montre 8 on the Grand Orgue. Um, in English, obviously, diapase and open diapase. And this is the Montre. And um, it's not typical of what Cavaille Cole would build for a Montre, but rather what Clicquot would. So it's a very fluty a Montre. So here it is. Very gentle, yeah, I and, and, very lovely, and yeah. very vocal, and and um, I think most organists would say, "Oh, that's not very loud," and it's not. No, but it's not what most American organs have. Is there? That's right. Great no, and we do not have open diapase in one, two, three, and four. <laughs> so, but but the build, the architecture of a French Romantic organ is such that one doesn't, uh, one never has just a single eight foot. Mm -hmm. So you add to that mantra the gamb eight the flute harmonic eight, the bourdon eight, and then you couple the positive and the raci together, and on the positive you add the montre eight, solutional eight, bourdon eight, on the raci you add the corps de nuit eight, the gambe eight, mm -hmm. and the flute eight, and you end up now with um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten eight foots, um, and we play in the lower part of the keyboard, and you'll hear that it's not very loud still. So, mezzo forte down here, up an octave. Yeah, there's a very obvious Very obvious. There. So, and when you start looking at, at repertoire, look at Vidor or Franck, and, and um, all of a sudden you realize that their, their music is being heavily influenced by exactly this treble ascendancy. So it's possible, for example, to accompany on one keyboard, you can accompany a melody with its own keyboard. So if I play lower in the, the Grand Org, you can play with no problem. Indeed. Works well. Wonderful. Yes. Um, well, let's listen to just, just to give us an example. Can we hear some of those stops just by themselves? Absolutely. Show how they add together Absolutely. to make that sound? So um, uh, we'll start with the Grand Org because uh, the Grand Org or the great organ, um, most important uh, division for, for any organ in the world. And um, so again, the Montre 8. The word Montre means to show in French and the pipes are in the facade, so it's what you see. Right yeah. um, an octave below that is the Montre 16, also in the facade. So, also gentle. Oh, very nice. The Gamp 8, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the many stringed uh, in stops on the organ. Bourdon 8. Flute harmonique. Now, what's very interesting about, about um, how this organ is put together is that on, on many um, American classic organs, you could pull on the open diapason, 
the largest open diapase on the grate, and you can start adding stops. You don't even hear that they're being added. Sure. Um, which, you know, fine. It's a different, different ethos. On this organ, these four stops can be combined um, in so many ways, and every single combination makes a different timbre. So the, the Montre 8 alone, I'll add the GAM. The Boudon. The harmonic flute. And then all four together. I'll take off flute harmonique. Bourdon. Gam. I was going to say, they're all such distinct colors, but none of them are, are very loud, but they all none together, of them are. they play they, very They all combine, <laughs> and, and what's, what's very interesting, um, and you see this inside the organ, is that in some of the eight-foot stops, the bottom octave um, pipes are made out of wood, mm. so they, they get a little bit more weight down there. So the Montre 8 is very light down here, but if I add the Bourdon, there's a little more gravity in, in, in uh, the timbre because of the, the pipe construction. Um, moving to the positif, which is um, right here in front of the, the console. Um, so, you know, RSD Cavaicol often would encounter organs that had the positif on the rail. Um, Notre Dame Paris um, originally had a positif on the rail, which it did not get used. saint sulpice still has the positif on the rail, but there's nothing in it. Right. <laughs> um, so, we we thought about that, and then we decided that because of the 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 low le, the low height of the balcony, that we would not put a, a, a positive on the rail. And, and so many times in the wrong setting, the wrong environment, a positive on the rail can never be in tune with the rest of the organ. <laughs> so who needs that? Anyway, here's the um, mantra on the the positive. It's very gentle. I'll contrast it with the, the Grand Org Montra. A little brighter and smaller scale. A little brighter, a little stringier. Um, so many of the cavicles, um, uh, the later cavicles had slots in, in uh, slotted pipes, which give a very stringy um, and, and aggressive timbre. This isn't the right acoustic for that. And again, it was a, a part of the discussion, and, and was like, no, we're not going to do any slotted uh, stops. Here's the solutional on the, on the positive. Back to the mantra on the positive. Interesting, they're the same dynamic, but they're different timbre. Now, I'll play the, the mantra alone. Solutional. The, the two become hmm. something greater than the sum yeah, of definitely. their parts. Um, the Bourdon on the positif, very beautiful. Contrasting that with the Grand Org Bourdon. Bourdon. Very dark. It's wood. The positive is metal. Now, um, one more eight foot on the positive is the Undamaris. So um, the Celeste, the Celeste stop. So here's the solutional without it. Now, a lot of people uh, see the stop under Morris and they think, you know, they think under Morris, meaning it should be tuned flat. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's still tuned still sharp. sharp. Okay. <laughs> but you will encounter occasionally um, a stop. And just, uh, uh, there was one year where we thought, let's try, let's see what an octave sounds like. And it's like, no, it sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> we'll stay with it, okay. uh, tuned as, as it meant to be. <laughs> so what's also interesting is that um, this Celeste um, will work beautifully with the Solucional. the mantra. The 
because their dynamic levels are so similar. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the location on the chest as well. But again, it's, um, we, we were very, very determined that every stop on this organ would make a difference, that there wouldn't be any stop that, yeah, you draw it, you don't even know if it's there, so who cares. Uh, on this organ, every stop contributes something okay. to the ensemble. Um, we go then from, from there to the Ray C, and the Ray C has um, a corps de nuit, typical stop for a cavaille col kind of organ. And it's wood on the bottom. Then the flute eight on the, the Ray C, which is a copy of the second huit pied, um, or the second eight foot stop of the Grand Org in the, uh, the Clico in uh, Poitiers, France. So it's very gentle, very beautiful. The Gamb 8. It's a little keener than the Gamb on the Grand Org. I'll play that. Gracie. And with its uh, Celes. Oh, lovely. Beautiful sounds. If you combine all the eight foots of the organ uh, along with the Celes, this is what you get. So something like <laughs> the, uh, the the uh, any of the adagios from the Vienna symphonies, mm -hmm. the fourth oh. the fourth movement of the of the uh, just stunning it stuff. Over it the just stunning thing. stuff. And none of that's very loud. But it's no, very full no. And, and no. But it carries it carries through the church in a really surprising way. I remember um, one of the first um, times I was in Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, and and uh, Olivier was going through the entire organ just as we're doing right now. And it was amazing how just all the harmonic flutes in the organ could carry to the opposite end of the cathedral, yeah. just as well as tutti. So here, um, all of the eight-foot flutes. Same. It's a lot of sound, but it's not loud or overwhelming. It doesn't hit your, and, and it's interesting that in this organ's history here at the church, there hasn't been one complaint about the organ being too loud. Wow. Imagine, <laughs> I'm either the luckiest organist in the world, because the previous organ, it was complaint, I mean, I would get anonymous notes in the offering play, mm. organist plays too loud. Well, you know, it wasn't me, it was the organ. <laughs> That's fair. And you know, there's a difference between loud and powerful. Sure. So. Mm -hmm. Um, let's look at some of the, um, well, let's look at the, the plan jeu. So mm -hmm. on this organ, the plan jeu is quite formidable. So um, on the Grand Org, Montre 16, Boudon 8, and then um, Montre 8, Preston 4, Cant 2, Furniture, Sambal, and then I'll couple in the positive plan jeu. All of these, um, most of these stops are, are either copies or strong influences from Poitiers.
Yeah, very brilliant. And very brilliant, but, but but not. Yeah, you know, it's 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 just right here. It's right. It's I assume down there where our microphones are. The listeners are probably it getting just, a much. It's a it's a it's a, it's a just a sound. really lovely. Um, one organist uh, here in Philly, a wonderful guy who hates mixtures, <laughs> hates, hates, <laughs> despises. He heard these and he said, "Oh my God, they're beautiful," <laughs> which I thought was you know, <laughs> lovely praise. So. Um, so for this organ, I think I, um, what visitors really love to hear are, are the reeds mm. because they're, they're very definitely not American reeds. Okay. So, um, on the, so we have on the Grand Org um, Bombard 16, Trompet 8, and Clairon 4. On the Ray C, we have Bombard 8, Trompet 8, Clairon 4. Um, um, these are sort of Notre Dame. These are kind of Clico. So from the Grand Org, AC. Not too dissimilar. No. Um, we add all of them, and now this is just six stops in the organ. French sound there. Extremely. <laughs> They're not going to be mistaken yeah, for anything in England. Six stops. You know. Just six <laughs> stops. One of my favorite uh, recordings, and I, I, I threatened to have this at my funeral, um, Pierre Cochereau for a funeral, I think it was Charles de Gaulle, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I think it was, um, played O Sacred Head Now Wounded, and it was just um, the, the manual stops 32 through 4 and then all the reads. <laughs> So I want this. I want this as my urn is carried down the aisle. So I'll play a little bit because it's it's kind of amazing. This is with 32 foot bombard and the pedal all the way up through. Um. Yeah, it's in my instructions. All right, so, but yeah, I mean, that's, um, and again, I, um, full disclosure, I would never play that, that, that many, stop, those stops on a Sunday morning, okay. typically. Postlude, sure. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I do have some sense of. Well, and you, you obviously don't need that much sound to fill the room. You don't, you don't. It's all there, though. And these other even softer stops are doing a fantastic job of filling yeah. the whole room. So, um, a very wonderful Cromarn on the positif. And then a corno di bassetto mm -hmm. on the positive. Okay. So um, at Notre Dame on the positive, you have the 16 foot corno di bassetto called the clarinet, eight foot clarinet, and a four foot clarinet, and we can get that effect here as well. Just by using the supercoupler. That's it. To double That's that. it. Wonderful. That's it. Yeah. On the AC, um, a, a wonderful oboe. This um, uh, Michel Garnier, our voicer, said this is the most expensive stop on the organ. <laughs> Um, because it, it's so difficult to voice. Oh. And the particular construction here, um, the shallots are, are, are faced with leather and, and uh, it's quite, quite interesting, mm. but it's a very beautiful oboe. And as a foundation stop, we 
works really well, and yeah. it's also great for uh, Corolla Company. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely. Works well. One of the things that struck me um, really boldly when I went over to, to see all the new Riegers that I could to make a decision about whether we would get a Rieger um, was how effective the swell boxes were. Mm. So the, the swell boxes themselves are lined with a very, very heavy wood um, panel. It's, it's wood that has a sandwich of sand um, between the wood. So it's, they're very heavy. I mean, it was incredible to watch the workers lug, and they were, they were built like in, in three feet wide sections, and they were groaning and grunting and swearing in German, and like, oh my God, it was incredible. But the result are, are the, the, these um, swell box walls that are like impenetrable, and then the swell shades themselves also have a lining of, of, of sawdust, or of sand in them. Kavaya Cole used sawdust from the factory to do that. So as a result, you end up with um, huge dynamic contrasts that are possible. So in the swell, for example, just the Celeste with the box opened. Same with the positive, which you can see here in the cameras. So she really shuts down. Yeah, definitely. Uh, even more impressive is then when you have, um, for example, a hymn, a registration where it's just foundations on the Grand Org and the Positive, and then the swell, the Raci, is full, but the box are closed. So if I. So it really, yeah, really <laughs> opens and closes nicely. Very effective. Yeah, yeah, that's, that works really well. Um, the other very, very unusual um, aspect of this organ is that um, it's mechanical action, and that was a given from the very beginning, because there was just, you know, that's what I believe in, and, and, uh, and it's what um, Olivier Latry, who worked on the project, believes in. We did, however, want things like octave grave and octave aigu, which were possible on cavaicles because of the Barker machines. We did not, however, have the space in the balcony to include that mechanism. So um, one of the things I, I saw firsthand uh, in Europe with the new Riegers is that um, many of those, the larger organs, had a second action that was a part of the instrument. So it was mechanical action, but also an electric action um, attached to it which gives you then the possibility of octave grave, octave below, or octave aigu. So the electric action essentially just works the coupler. It, exactly right. And you can, you can either mechanically couple each manual together, which most people do, or you can electrically couple. Um, and I will confess that like on the, by the third service of, uh, on Easter morning, the Vidor Takata, <laughs> I will sometimes say, oh, to heck with it, I'm gonna couple the Racy <laughs> electrically and nobody's gonna know. But, you know, it, the action is very responsive. It's not, you know, it's not unduly heavy at all. Um, but, but these options with electric coupling, or, or the electric um, action are great because now on the Racy, for example, if we have the Celeste, okay, I pull on the electric coupling, the octave grave, I get the octave below. Now, you know, most people are saying, well, big deal, my molar can do that. <laughs> but it's a mechanical action organ, which makes that really, this was the first Rieger that did that. Oh, really? So um, since then, all Riegers <laughs> do that. So that's below and then above. Now, not only can we get octave above and octave below, we now have the possibility of sostenudos. So if I engage sostenuto, I can either play a single note,
So, a single melody. We can go up to the raised C. Or a chord. So this happens, um, I mean, this is, for me, this is just a blast. Um, and occasionally there's a place for it in repertoire as well. Well, and I've, I've said this before, I've, I've seen them, this is only the second church organ I've seen with the Sostenuto. Yeah. They're usually the, you find them on theater organs. Sure. Because yeah, theater organs love to improvise, and of course you obviously love to improvise as well, so that seems like it'd be... Uh, well, you know, it, it, it really, it's quite interesting, because you can start to get some really unusual effects. For example, <laughs> um, if I couple... Uh, let's see if I coupled, for example, eight and two from the race C, um, and use sostenuto on the positive, I can get a pizzicato. Sostenuto on the grand org. So that's yeah, kind of fun. It's a lot it, of fun. <laughs> it, begins, it begins to approximate what a Hammond B3 can do. Oh, yeah. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with a Hammond B3. You know, I, it's the, maybe, the, maybe the second greatest organ in the world is a Hammond B3. But. So um, we have many mutations, and the, the organ is only 59 stops, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, it makes it a large organ, but not an immense pipe organ. Um, so we have all the mutations you really need, but we don't have septiems, we don't have we don't have a known. That's, that's a little in the realm of... Yeah, and you know, that's, that's, now you're looking at organs that are much larger, but Notre Dame Paris has um, at least three septi... Actually, there are four septiums at different, different pitch levels. We have no septiums, but um, we have on the Grand Org a very beautiful cornet that's from middle C up. mounted um, and it's middle C up because it, its function is um, as Kavai Cole imagined it was to reinforce the power of the reeds because the reeds have no problem getting louder going down they have a harder time getting louder going up so the cornet kicks in and helps the reed sound carry on up on okay. um, the racy this cornet is the range of a Clicquot cornet so it starts at G because the racies uh, on the 18th century Clicquots the, the manual compass was less than the other manual. So the lowest pitch is G. It's actually my favorite cornet in the organ. The, the Grand Org again. Kind of fluty. This is a little more. And they're both mounted. So the, the Grand Org uh, Cornet is mounted right at the front of the case, and the Ray C Cornet is mounted clear at the back of the case. So um, both the, the Ray C, the Grand Org, and the pedal are on the same level, which is great for tuning stability. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the location of those Cornets gives some sense of, of spatial distance that I think is good. The positive has um, the, the, the classic cornet separé. Mm -hmm. So the eight, the eight foot bourdon, four foot flute en chamigny. Now the nazar. The court de nazar, which is the two foot. Thiers. Larigot. Piccolo. It's even a little more uh, strident than the swell cornet. It's, it's all well. It's personal. right. It's right in front of you. That's right. It's right in front of you, and it's it's meant to be a little more powerful. Okay. Now, where we can get into some interesting mutation effects is, is if we pull on mutations and then start fussing around with things like octave grave. Mm. So, um, so right now the registration is Preston four, two and two third Nazard and the Tiers with the octave grave, mm. and then we get. So we get a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Or, or you can start playing those in fours. Mm -hmm. 
and you get you get even more yeah, bizarre <laughs> sounds. But you know, I, there's a registration I sometimes use with the congregation, um, and it's actually the cornet on the on the positive hmm. all the way through the larigo, all the eight foots with the octave grave, and it's. And that sound carries all the way to the front. Yeah, you, can um, yeah. you have no problem discerning um, melody at all. So that's, that's useful. Really? Pedal. Let's talk um, about the pedal division. So um, when this organ debuted uh, for, the, for the local chapter, um, the first question I, I got was, why on earth would you get rid of a four manual organ <laughs> with 98 ranks for a three manual organ with 88 ranks? I mean, they just couldn't get their heads around it. And it's like, well, you know, we actually got a lot more organ um, out of those uh, 88 ranks. The other was, there are no pedal mixtures? How is this possible? And, um, well, the answer is, well, it's quite possible. We have, that's the pedal mixtures you, you get through couplers. And Kavai Cole understood that very well. And, and again, this isn't a Bach organ. It can play Bach, but that's, um, we felt going into this that the, 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 the real, um, lack of, 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 of organs that could play the French romantic uh, repertoire and the French classic repertoire was severe. Mm. And so we felt there was a need for an organ like this. And, you know, Bach sounds great anywhere. It sounds great at Wanamaker's, it sounds great on this organ. And what's really interesting is registering um, this organ. We have recordings, you know, of, of Vierne playing Bach, and it's really quite interesting to play Bach with a Vierne registration. Completely different effects, quite, <laughs> quite fantastic. So the pedal um, is not very large. There's a Subas 32, there's a Contrabass, uh, wonderful stop. Sounds very quiet here, but it has, it's all fundamental, and out mm. in the room it carries wonderfully. Um, there is a mutation, 10 and 2 third, um, which um, was really inspired by Notre Dame. We didn't have the space for all the other mutations, but that was an important stop because it also Im improves the sense of speech in the pedal. Mm. It just makes the pedal with the 32 foot on slightly um, more prompt. Um, there's a wooden uh, violoncelle. Um, there's a flute eight, open wood. an open uh, wood uh, flute four. So the violoncelle is open and it's wood. The flute eight is open, it's wood. The contrabass, open, it's wood. Then um, this is 32 up through four, and this is all we have in the pedal. And I would say, who needs more? Yeah. Um, then we have the reeds, which are, are immense. So we have a contrabombard 32, which is full length. On the bottom octave is wood. I'll start um, at the second C. Like all 32-foot bombards, it's as musical as it can be, yeah, of course. but it does sit under the organ really well. Um, it's actually um, um, extends to the 16-foot level, okay. so the two together. Basson 16. Uh, which is our, our, our Bach 16-foot um, <laughs> ring. Um, and then a, a, an 8-foot trumpet that's really kind of enormous. So all the pedal stops. That's the first thing I would kind of say is loud in here. That's really got a lot of impact. It's, in it's that. powerful, <laughs> for sure, for sure. And the 32 foot, so I, you know, um, certainly postludes. I, I mm -hmm. would never, the preludes, I, we rarely play too loudly here. But that 32 foot bombard, I, I always use it on the third verse of Ein Festeburg. <laughs> um, 
And so the congregation, I mean, they, they, they love that. It's, they come up and this after uh, people come up and say, oh, that, I heard the devil in the third verse. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that devil was the most expensive stop in the organ. But yeah. the way these cameras are mounted, the audience might get a feeling of how this is shaking <laughs> yeah, the balcony. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty on. much. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, oh, my God, the, the volume in. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so um, this is just it alone. of course would be used with the eight foots. Really lovely. It's very lovely. nice. Yeah. Sound. Yeah. Yeah. This is just an amazing instrument. Um, it speaks French very well and, and very deliberately, and I like that about it. Um, I also, there's, for being a relatively modern organ, there's not a whole lot of stuff here besides keys and knobs. Yeah, yeah, that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, um, uh, um, <laughs> that was a great day. Um, at the time, this was one of, um, this was a, Olivier flew here um, for a meeting to discuss the console. And it was hysterical because I had just purchased a new car. It was a two-seater convertible. And I picked him up at the airport, and he had this huge suitcase because he was starting a, a tour. And the suitcase wouldn't fit in the trunk. So there's Olivia La Tree with the, the top is down, and he's holding his suitcase. Well, he's a big guy, too. Well, so no, he's, he's not. He's not really. He's, you know, he's, he's, taller he's, than me, he's so skinny. <laughs> I mean, he's a skinny kid. Um, so, so that was, and Olivia, I mean, we still laugh about that. Um, and I felt just awful. It's like, oh my God, I'm picking up, you know, this fabulous person and he's having to carry his luggage in his suitcase. But we went, came to the church, um, went for a while, then we went to Starbucks. And uh, he said, let's figure out the console. And so, yeah, um, we discussed um, the pros and the cons. And um, we looked at everything from having lots of divisional pistons, sort of the traditional American classic approach, divisionals and then toe studs for, for pedal pistons and all that stuff. And ultimately, um, and I was leaning in that way, ultimately Olivier persuaded me that, that the organ should be ergonomically as comfortable as it could be with absolutely no um, strange gimmicks or, you know, so, so you don't have things like Swell to great 16 or blah, blah, blah. You can, you can name them. Oh, reversibles all over the place. Or, or God forbid, having to lean back, like, as you do with so many large organs, lean back, hope you don't fall off the bench, to find the, the, you know, the 32-foot bombard reversible piston. I mean, what a useless <laughs> thing, sure. right? Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So we ended up with an organ that simply has 10 generals. And a, a, lot, of, a lot of folks come in and say, how do you play a service with 10 generals? And the answer is, well, with no problem. Yeah. Um, because we have these memory cards, each card can hold 4,000 generals. Wow. Every general can have three inserts between. And um, you, can either, um, cap, you can either push a piston for the generals or we have a toe stud and they're all totally visible. Mm. So there's no, you know, having to look and, and pray to God you're not hitting general six when you really <laughs> meant to hit, you know, swell to pedal two. Well, and um, you have a piston sequencer as well. I well, think. we have uh, not only one, we have um, for the feet, uh, forward and back, on, under and each um, keyboard, forward and back. And, and one over here for your page turner, right? Page turner there <laughs> or over there. So we, that's one, two, three, four, five different places yeah. where you can piston forward or piston back. So I feel... Be, it seems to be the more the style these days. So and and, more and more. It, it works. It's just, um, it's like you get all that stuff out of the way so you can just play. So getting into this organ is fairly easy. There's a big door right here just in the side of the case. First thing we see are the 32-foot Bombard resonators there. There are some pedal trackers going up to the chest above, but the Bombards are on the floor here. They are full-length 32s. There are trackers, I believe, going up to the grate. We have a door here in this walkboard, and we open this, and this is the positive division, with the shades going right out to the front of the case. And 
then behind the grate, here are the pedal bombards again. Going all the way up. Back here at the back of the case, there is a ladder. And that takes us up to another walk board that gets us up to the swell and grate divisions. Here we see the swimmer regulators for the swell, which is above us. There's the roller board for the grate division. This ladder right here in front of us leads up to a door. We open up that door and we're looking in at the grate division. It's grate and pedal. Uh, the grate's here in the middle. The pipes on either end, mostly wood ones, are uh, the pedal pipes. There's our mounted cornet right there behind the facade. And then the swell opens directly into the grate. So Jeffrey here is going to open the swell for us. There's a ladder handy. And we're in the swell. We have all the reeds here in the front. And the swell cornet is mounted up in the air as well. And it looks like just one pipe had to be mitered to fit in this division. Back down in the grate, looking at the swell shades, you can see how thick they are and how they're double beveled so they make a complete seal when they close. So we'll peek at the top end of the grate reeds. And way back out. Go back behind the grate and there's a cabinet here for the blower, which is placed inside the organ. And a padded room to muffle the sound. And continuing further on, we have the combination action and all the electronics for the organ. Back here at the end of the case, we get a little panel here for the uh, all of the organ builders that participated in this.
Well, Jeff, thank you so much for demonstrating so wonderfully this uh, 2005 Rieger organ here at Bryn Mawr Presbyterian. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Amazing colors and sounds and so unique. Uh, it's been one of the most interesting organs we've seen lately. Cool. cool. Um, and you've got some concerts coming up that were postponed due to COVID. Tell me about those. Yes, so well, um, Vincent Dubois is playing the end of October. I'm very excited about mm -hmm. that. I love Vincent's, um, his musicality is, is stunning. He's a great improviser. Mm -hmm. And he knows the organ. Uh, when he played at Kimmel um, the last time, he came out and spent an afternoon here, and we had a great time. And then Olivier Latry, who designed the organ, will come in um, March of 2023. Next, yeah. <laughs> Can't believe that already. Um, my 40th year here at Bryn Mawr at that point. Wow. Um, so Olivier, um, is, it's always an adventure having Olivier here. The last time he played, um, it included Stravinsky as Rite of Spring uh, transcription for, for four hands. So no idea what he's, he's planned this time around. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be exciting. We it will, will put, be exciting. We'll put a link to the church's website down uh, in the description where Great. people can Great. find out more That's information. Awesome. Great. We'll also put a link to the Oregon Media Foundation's webpage where you can become a sponsor and help us make more videos like this one. Great. It's easy to do. Just go to Oregon.media and click on support. Make sure you're also subscribed to our channel and click on the bell to get notifications when new videos come out. And if you like this one, click on the thumbs up for us. Until next time, you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, OregonLive.com, Positively Baroque, and the Oregon experience. Until next time, I'm Brent Johnson. Talk to you later.